it rises and falls. It's complicated in terms of its gradient, and there are three or four really long sweeping hairpins as well. But it's the second half, from, mid from midway up the climb, it is its hardest. Pitches up at 17, 18%, and it is Geraint Thomas driving hard on the front, a bit between his teeth there. You can just see Balka Molima on the wheel of Pavel Sivakov, and I think it's a Sepp Van Mark now moving yep. up to the front. He'll like this climb too. Ben Gaster, the real tall, rangy rider from ag 2 us Citroen, has Greg Van Avma on his wheel. We can see uh, Astana there with uh, Omar Freile, with uh, Jakob Fulsang there with the white glasses. Also uh, to the front, Quebec Assos with uh, Simon Clark. Garen Thomas did the pull there, and it's now up to Azure Desert Citroën working there for Greg van Avermaet in that green jersey. He has that points jersey on loan, and this is the start of the climb. It's a showdown moment for this second stage of the Tour des Alpes Maritimes et du Var with Greg van Avermaet now going to the front in that green jersey with, uh, well, still many teammates around him, still another teammate pacing him. They have uh, good strength in numbers here with uh, Azure Desert Citroën. Oh, they certainly do. Uh, Greg Van Avermaet just caught himself on the front there. That's not where he wanted to be, so he dropped back pretty quickly. Looks like it's Feline now moving up. And Narek Quintana, number one, remember last year's went in the red jersey on at the left-hand side, just following the wheels. The big acceleration now from a team of Total Direct Energy. Yeah, that might be Pierre Latour, who is a try. And, of course, also Alexis Viermos is a... Well, a specialist, and it is Viermos, a specialist on, uh, well, walls like this, which, of course, Mur de Fayence is the wall of the town of Fayence. Uh, this is, uh, well, the easier part, like Pogba Molema said. You can see that the pace is still really, really high, but it's going to get down to that final three, 400 meters, that hairpin, where you really have to position yourself to, uh, to have a shot at winning this stage. No time bonuses, so probably the person winning this stage has a chance of also overtaking that yellow jersey. And if Molema is in that first group, he will keep that jersey. And he's trying really, really hard. But we have an, another increase in tempo there by Alexis Viermos, the French rider coming from uh, Agilisère La Mondiale, one of those climbers who left the team and now went on to another rider, uh, to another team. Also at the front is... Uh, well, Michael Israel Woods. startup nation. Yeah, it's like Michael Woods in second position at the moment. Jonathan Navraez is just in third wheel there. Not too far away is Bolkomonova. Pavel Sivakov is there. Ben O'Connor there is the rider sat down yep. there with a white helmet on for AG2R Citron. So AG2R Citron have a lot of options. Just trying to see where Greg Van Avermaet is. A little bit further down the ranking. And on the, the right hand side, just coming through at the moment, is David Goldu, your favourite. Tenth yesterday, looking very, very good. And this, Yosi, is where the climb is at its deepest. Mike Woods leaning on it. Navraez. <laughs> A second. Look at the Canadian, he is uh, marking Bauke Mollema. This is one of those turns, a lot of spectators here. Narvaez, uh, Bauke Mollema, David Gaudu, also Valentin Madouas in that white jersey. Those are the first five riders now in the final 300 meters of the Mur de Fayence. Michael Woods, Rusty Woods as he's called, is leading the charge together with the rider from uh, um, Ecuador. Nice. It's Navais indeed, but Michael Woods is looking incredibly strong. He was, of course, in that top five yesterday, and he is absolutely going for it, because if he wins this stage, he's also taking that yellow jersey, because he only had one second on Balka Mollema, but Balka Mollema is not giving up this easily. But already at the finish line cameras is Michael Woods. He's on his way to winning this stage, but Balka Mollema is doing everything to salvage his classification, but it's a double win for Michael Woods. He wins the stage and he takes that yellow jersey off the shoulders of Bauke Mollema, who comes in second. Narvaez is third, David Godu in fourth, Viermos and uh, Mollard, a lot of uh, French riders in that top ten. Also, Nairo Quintana at the front of this race. There is Greg van Avermaet, only losing, what is it, 12 seconds, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a spectacular win. I mean, on the steepest part of the climb, with about 500 metres to go, Michael Woods, as we look at Geraint Thomas here, did what he knows best, and that is to go long. It's just to ride at a tempo that nobody else, that puts others into the red. And once you, when you go long and you put a rider into the red, they've got nothing left to go over the top of. There's no slipstream effect on a gradient like that. So Michael Woods, on the steep section, did what he knows best and did it to perfection. He rode Narvaez wow. off his wheel. He rode Molima off his wheel, but Molima fought back and will get the time gaps on the line. They might actually be equal on, on time. So it might go on to count back onto stage placings, but no doubt yeah. about the winner. It is Michael Woods. Um, well, yeah, he's going to be happy with that.
Props to you, uh, uh, Matt, for having it right. That's uh, one point for you. I have to do uh, revanche <laughs> tomorrow on that one. But on the comeback, it's going to be uh, Balka Molema who uh, keeps the jersey because he has a first and second place. And Michael Woods has a, a first and fifth place or fourth place from the top of my mind. So it depends on what the jury is going to do with that time gap. But first, the interview. It was a really, really hard race. Uh, the team has done a wonderful job. Enfin, euh, on a décidé de rester derrière après, de rester derrière Ineos. Puis, euh, We just stayed behind Ineos. Euh, euh, donc, euh, euh, ben Mark, Daryl, tous les courses de mon équipe m'ont bien placé. Yeah, it really uh, compliments uh, the team with Sepp von Marke, Daryl Impey, who did amazing work for him. And I do think, Matt, seeing that finish again, that that is a second. Well, then they're, they're on the same time. So let's yeah. see what the jury decides here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be tight, isn't it? And then on count back, Mollum was the most consistent in terms of placings, a first and a second, when it will be a fourth and a first for Woods. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we shall see. But I think it would have been a second there. So equal on time and just going into the final stage on stage blazing. That's unofficial. Ooh. That's me and you working it out. But uh, it does set it up rather tastily, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, this no well, lovely kind of hors d'oeuvres and amuse-bouche before la, la dernière étape de main. Uh, oh, yeah. you, <laughs> you're making me hungry. I just, I just have to go and eat after this uh, amuse-bouche and all these other food references. Normally when I do a French race, I talk about cheese, but we didn't really get to the cheese part today, The racing today, was too we? furious to mention cheese. Oh, Maybe no tomorrow cheese. we can have a cheese chat at the top of the show. Yeah, all other important stuff. But the racing was really good. And a wonderful, wonderful win for Michael Woods. And uh, Valka Mollema in second place. Will he keep on to that yellow jersey? It's up to the jury to decide that. Well, if you look at the... Uh, Top 10, it's um, Michael Woods, Bauke Mollema, Jonathan Narvaez, David Godu, Alexis Viermos, Rudy Mollar, Ben O'Connor, great seventh place there for the Australian, Jesus Errada, Arjen Levins, another top 10 place for him, and Pavel Sivakov, the Russian Frenchman or French Russian of uh, the Ineos Grenadiers. But uh, great result there for Arjen Levins as well. And uh, well, watch out for him. A lot of uh, the bigger teams have been sleeping, but. Uh, this guy will do great things. And if you can do this on a mule like this, you have uh, other options. But the man of the day is uh, absolutely uh, Michael Woods for Israel Startup Nation, beating uh, Bauke Molema and uh, Jonathan Narvaez. Yeah, superb, superb win. It's a great, Love. great fight back by uh, yeah. Bauke Molema as well there. He's clearly in great form. Um, but uh, a lovely location, some great racing. It did all come back together, but it was a hard day out. That's really going to hurt the legs. It's going to be a great preparatory um, well, um, set, set of kilometers for the riders. But heading into tomorrow, which is even more difficult, it's going to yeah. be uh, interesting to see if Mollema can, uh, can hold on. But we'll get the overall in a minute well, for you. But I think it will yeah, be Yeah, I have it on my screen. I have it on my screen. And it says that Malcolm Mollema is... Uh, is holding on to that uh, jersey. They are uh, on the exact same time, nine hours, seven minutes and 15 seconds. And then yeah. on countback, like you explained, if the time is the same, if there's no bonus seconds or whatever involved, you just add up the two, in this case, two uh, stage placings and uh, see who has the lowest total amount. And that is uh, the Dutchman, Balko Mollema. And tomorrow we go to the uh, training ground of Balko Mollema. If you look at his Strava, these are the kind of climbs that he loves doing. It's a short stage, it's a furious stage with uh, three climbs of the Rudy, first category. Uh, Rudy oh, we have an interview with uh, David Goody. Uh, une étape aujourd'hui uh, dans le Var. Comment ça s'est passé pour toi? Uh, plutôt bien. Uh, après, il nous manquait un petit peu well. pour aller gagner, mais Woods était vraiment plus fort. I tried to win, but uh, six, Woods was too strong. Uh, dans les 10, donc uh, on est content, mais but still well, in the top 10, so I'm happy. Demain, uh, la plus I'm not that far in the overall. Général, demain, on en and uh, tomorrow we uh, go and try for the overall. Et justement, uh, puisque tu nous fais cette transition pour demain, c'est un petit peu tes terres. Uh, tu es, uh, it's a bit your region, says Comment the interviewer. Alt Maritime, that's where Godu is uh, from. Étape demain. Oui, je connais par cœur. C'est vraiment mes routes d'entraînement quand je vais faire des sorties montagnes. I, I know the region. These are my training roads. C'est des cols à plus de 1000 mètres d'altitude, 3700 mètres de dénivelé. Ouais, Col de Braus, which is uh, the second climb. So uh, look out for David Godu because he has ambitions for tomorrow. 
Yeah, and as you said, he's going to be heading to the the, the, the Grand Boucle later in the year as the team leader as well. So, uh, yeah, he's, uh, but they've got a lot of options. Really impressed with their group armor uh, have ridden. And there he is sitting in fourth place over on the general classification. Um, so that's the stage, should I say. Um, they've got Mollard up there as well. Uh, but no, they've definitely got some options. They're going to be pretty happy with that, I think, uh, as we head into that final stage. And as you said, it's a short but a shortish stage, <laughs> only about 125 k's long, but there's so much hurt. climbing in it. Yeah, 3,600 <laughs> meters in that short distance. It's going to be a really challenging stage. And I think, Jose, they're going to really attack this from the gun to, tomorrow. I think it's going to be a massively reduced field that uh, heads into the finale tomorrow. Also, um, some placings today. We have seen the top 10. Nairo Quintana was 11th, then Martin 13, all in the same time.